Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to talk about progressive overload, what it is and how it can help you change your body. Let's dive in. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. I'm glad you're here. So what I'm going to start doing is talk about some principles that I want you to start understanding that'll help you change your body when you're trying to build a lean and muscular physique. Today's topic is called progressive overload. So what is progressive overload? If you think about it and you break down the two words, it's actually very simple. What you're doing is over a period of time, you are progressively overloading your muscles with a mechanical stress or a strain that it's used to. What that does is it sends a signal to your body and your muscles that the muscle and the body has to change. And then over time, what's happening is the muscles are changing, you're forming the lean muscular physique that you want. And as part of that building muscle, you automatically burn fat as a kind of metabolic process that happens. But sticking on progressive overload, the easiest way to progressively overload your muscles is in the weight room. And if you think about it, we'll take, you know, whatever, a bench press, for example. Say you can only start out with the bar and a couple of 10 pound weights on it. Well, great, that's 65 pounds, 45 pound bar, two 10 pound weights, 65 uh, pounds, a little bit of bro math there for you. <laughs> but what we want to do is say, hey, I want to build a bigger chest. The way we build a bigger chest is we lift within a certain rep range and a certain amount of sets uh, with a certain amount of rest period in between each one of these sets. And what this does is it sends a signal to your body. So say that you're lifting, you know, three sets of 10 reps for a good week. Well, what's going to happen is your body, this is how your body adapts and you build the physique you want. It becomes stronger obviously and as it becomes stronger that strain that you had the 65 pounds in your chest will no longer do any good unless we increase the weight or increase the repetitions and this is what progressive overload is the reason i like progressive overload it's actually what i use with my clients is it's the easiest way to one to track and measure to see your progress it's also the easiest way in order to add mechanical stress and tension on your body in order to get the muscles to change. So what you wanna be doing is, again, progressively overload your muscles by adding weight systematically over a period of time. If you do this, you are guaranteed to see results, given that you have an exercise program that's comprehensive, meaning it hits all the muscles in your body, all the major muscles, and also the minor ones that you need to work on for your individual situation, say if you have an injury or an imbalance. But as long as you're working out consistently, we'll take the classic split, push, pull legs, meaning chest and shoulders, back and arms, and then legs all in one day. And you're progressively overloading on these exercises, regardless of what rep range you're in or how many sets you do, you are guaranteed to see results. This is a basic scientific principle of exercise physiology and exercise science. And it's a great way, again, that you can implement into whatever you're doing right now in order to see results. One question you may have is, well, how often do I raise weights or how often uh, should I you know, jump up in uh, raising the weight to the next level? So it really depends. And here's where you know, it becomes a science and also an art form. And shout out to my buddy Drew who gave me kind of that metaphor or way of thinking about uh, weightlifting and bodybuilding, that it's both a science and an art form. And we use the science, progressive overload, the principle, uh, in order to perfect our art. And here's where the art comes in. Say that you've been at 65 pounds, you know, on the bench press for a week and you've done it, you know, you've had three chest workouts, you probably will say two chest workouts. That second chest workout, okay, great, I feel really good, you know, and on that second chest workout, all of a sudden, you notice right off the bat, it just feels lighter immediately. Well, you can go ahead and pump the weight up a little bit, and what you wanna do is you wanna focus on making sure, number one, always that you are performing the weight with good, correct, crisp, and neat form, but you wanna make sure that you're doing a weight that allows you to be challenged throughout the entire set, but especially challenged over those last two to three repetitions. So. In other words, say you get to the third set of your lift, okay? And all of a sudden, on the third set of your lift, at you know repetition eight, nine, and 10, 
Uh, yes, it's challenging because there's a little fatigue, but you feel that you got a lot more in the tank. That's a clear sign that you should up the weight. A lot of this seems simple, but what we happen to do or what I've observed as a trainer is that people either don't raise the weight quick enough and because they're they're kind of scared, they don't know what their ceiling is um, and that comes with experience and then uh, also professional guidance if you've ever worked with a trainer, they may think, oh, there's no way I can lift that with good form. When reality is, you can probably lift that new weight, maybe you're just a little bit scared because you've never done it before. Or, of course, we've all seen is ego lifting. And the name, name of the game is perfect form. So if you get to your third set and you're able to do 65 pounds, nice and clean and crisp for 10 reps with no problem, you clearly need to go up in weight. And what I would say is this, say that the next week you raise it up to 75 pounds. So we add you know, another 10 pounds on the bar total, five pound weights. And that first exercise or that first set that you do with the bench press the following week when it's time to raise the weight, it's challenging, but you're able to get to the 10 reps. Say the second set, you are barely able to complete the 10 reps at 75 pounds, and then at the third set, your form starts to crumble, you can't even really get up that third uh, set, the 10 reps on the third set um, by the sixth, seventh, eighth rep. That means you're in the sweet spot. You are in the sweet spot of progressively overloading your muscles, because what'll happen is, the next time you do bench press and that chest workout, you'll be you'll notice what'll happen is you'll be able to get instead of six or seven reps all of a sudden you'll be able to get eight nine maybe ten repetitions and as long as you're again maintaining with good form you're not you know getting a big spot or like sliding all over the place that's an indication that it's time you're basically at your capacity and you are in the sweet spot for training zone uh, for the training zone to send that signal to your body for your muscle to change so again real quick video today focus on your form first understand progressive overload is simply adding weight over a period of time with any exercise that is guaranteed to get you results but you've got to make sure that you do not ego lift and you put on too much weight too quickly if you have bad form or any you know kind of uh, hiccups and and it's not super clean with any exercise what happens is the heavier weight that you get to that's at your maximum capacity those flaws are magnified so let's take a back squat for example if you do a back squat and you're executing the squat and you think you have really good form and say you're doing, you know, whatever, 135 pounds, right? Which is two 45 pound plates and you're squatting now and you say, oh man, I can really, you know, this feels light. I can, f I feel like I can go up and say you stack on, you know, 10 more pounds on each side. So now you're at 155 total on the bar and you squat and all of a sudden your knee is screaming. It starts to hurt or it's sore after the workout or your lower back is hurting. That means that you have flaws in your technique that you need to go back and look at and fix before you progress the weight and progressively overload your back squat or whatever exercise it is. Very important that you do this. A lot of people will uh, execute an exercise with poor form, maybe not even knowing it too. And I'll give you a little tip for that right now. And what happens is if you execute it with poor form, you're ingraining a crappy movement pattern in your mind and you're reinforcing a bad habit. And most importantly, you're setting yourself up for possible future injury. Not to mention, if you're doing shitty form, regardless of the weight, it really doesn't matter what weight or what you're doing, even if you are lifting really heavy, because the form is not being executed correctly, therefore the muscles are not being challenged in the proper way. If they're not being challenged in the proper way, they're simply not going to change, or your workouts are not going to be as effective as they could, given that you are lifting with the proper form. So always start with the proper form. And a great way to do this, you know, everyone's, obviously we all got smartphones now, is simply just film a set of yourself doing your near maximum weight. So if you're, you know, 135 on the back squat, film your third, and we're doing three sets of 10 again, just as an example, you film, you wanna film that third set and watch what you look like. And if you're able to, you know, if you're really struggling, Again, when it gets really heavy, that's always when the form starts to crumble down. You can go back and you can watch that video and analyze it, ask someone experienced at the gym, ask a trainer or watch a video and just look at what you're doing. And you will see, you know, is my back straight? 
Are my knees coming out wide? Is my butt getting low enough to where my thighs are parallel with the ground? Or do I sit there and just do a little baby squat and my knees cave in and that's why my right knee hurts every time I do 135 pound? These are things that you have to correct in order to lift safely, properly, and effectively and implement progressive overload into your program. So that is the video for today. I just wanted to go over a, what progressive overload is, how it can guarantee results, and how to properly implement it with your current workout structure. What you wanna do next is go ahead and watch some of the workouts that I've posted. Uh, I'm posting my chest and shoulder workouts, my back and arm workouts, and also my leg workouts. These are going to give you a good uh, working framework to have a full structured program for all the major muscle groups in your body. And if you literally follow along in those videos in the gym and follow this principle of progressive overload while focusing on good form first, you are guaranteed to see results. And that's even if your diet isn't all the way dialed in. Take that with the, you know, don't, don't take that, you know, complete literal, uh, you know, out of context that diet doesn't matter. Diet's extremely important, but even if your diet is average for a lot of people, especially if you tend to overeat, if all you did was implement weightlifting and you, you know, kept the same diet, you would see some results. But go ahead and watch those videos on my workouts. I also have a great video on how many calories you should eat in order to lose weight uh, and burn body fat, and then also one on protein that's very important as well. So I hope this was helpful. Feel free to like and subscribe. Leave any comments if you have any questions and email me, let me know. Uh, happy to answer any questions and help you out. And then I do do one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. So if you're interested in that, there's a link in the description below for that. So again, you have a wonderful day and we'll see you on the next video. Peace.